Pastor Chris Kumpla at Living Word Mankato here to talk about our Foster and Faith Family Outreach Ministry Plan. This is something that's been in the works the last two years and uh, over the last six months to a year have been trying to uh, develop in terms of kind of setting up a lot of the foundational planning. And so I want to be able to kind of give an update of where things stand and, and where we're going. And so this is a, a good thumbnail sketch to understand what it is we're trying to do as we try to be effective in reaching families and ministering to families as a church. It says in James 1.27, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And in the context of James, you know, the idea of orphans, you know, it's more than kids in a, a state institution. They're, they're kids without parents or maybe kids uh, that don't have a father in their home. And we, we tend to think of a narrow idea of, you know, kids that are in a, a large orphanage institution or something like that. And for widows, we think of, of, uh, of wives who have lost their husbands, and especially when they're grieving. And, and those, those notions are, are too narrow to what it is that James has in mind. He, he is speaking about those that are most vulnerable in society and identifying them as the, the real opportunity for the church to reach out into the world and bear witness to Christ and share his life giving word to change families and give them a hope, especially families uh, that struggle to have hope with difficult circumstances and so on. Uh, this ministry plan uh, is laid out in a way to give us an overview of sort of what the strategic steps are, uh, and then we'll talk about some of the action steps that we can take in the future and then really look at sort of what the, the impact is, what, what the payoff is of, uh, of going through this work. As, as a church, you know, we need to reach families to be able to uh, sustain the ministry and to raise the next generation of Christians. And uh, as a church, too, we're, we're to minister to those that are in need. But we can't do that, uh, if, we can't do that well if, if we don't have some kind of uh, a foundation laid. And so there's been a lot of effort in terms of our ministry planning, uh, getting financial systems set up, um, dealing with some various issues in terms of uh, dealing with uh, a family ministry in the 21st century with a lot of liability concerns, um, many of them related to facility, but not all of them, and then just a variety of administrative support needs. Because you know, if those aren't addressed, uh, it's very, very challenging to be able to do uh, anything uh, ambitious with family ministry without without running into I an issue where things sort of peter out or, or you really don't have the, 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 the building blocks in place to be able to make progress. So there's a lot of work in terms of, of planning and finding out what's out there and, and finding ways to make things actionable and, and, and analyzing what it is that we have as resources as a congregation that, that we can leverage and even the gifting of, of, of the people that we have and the people that continue to come. Uh, the, the second strategic step on, on our journey in this is building partnerships with a number of organizations. Uh, in 2020, we officially signed on with the Christian Alliance for Orphans, and they're an international organization that has really uh, rallied the church behind the vision of reclaiming its place as the advocate for the widow and the orphan, because that's how it had been for such a long time in the history of the world that the church really was a champion for this. And it wasn't until recent history that the state has taken over the responsibility with what we could say are, are mixed results at best. Um, as the need continues to grow with the number of families in the system, the state system is just utterly burnt out and social workers really have quite a difficult task. And so uh, that's just one example, the Christian Alliance for Orphans, uh, probably the, the largest umbrella organization that has a, a vision for uh, moving in this direction. And, and, you know, and so you can go from that down to, um, you know, some larger parachurch ministries, or, you know, we can go all the way down to, to looking at building partnerships with uh, individual parachurch ministries that are here in the Mankato community, uh, looking to Blue Earth County, uh, and, and in the same way, looking to gathering resources. And, and those are informational. There's training resources from Christian Alliance for Orphans. There's other uh, ministry organizations that are working hard to equip churches to engage families effectively. Uh, and in the midst of this is you know, looking at our facility, which is our, our, our greatest asset as a ministry right now, and, and really looking at it to see, well, how are we going to be able to utilize that over the long-term future? 
and, and where are the short-term wins in terms of being able to leverage the facility to build those relationships that uh, kind of take us on our way to the next step. We can leverage those resources to build and support relationships, again, with those entities and uh, with other families as well as we recruit them and, uh, uh, and equip them to be leaders and really take ownership of this ministry as it grows and build a network that can be, can be deployed to meet this need in our community in a compelling way that, that other churches um, are not currently doing on their own um, that we would like to see happen. So in terms of what does this actually look like? Okay, so you know that's sort of the, the theoretical piece. What does this actually look like? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the first step, again, in this foundational level is investing in our foundational planning and administrative support needs. Um, this is a lot of the, the, the planning, a lot of context with uh, uh, Together for Good in Minneapolis, for one example, Blue Earth County, uh, Christian Alliance for Orphans, other churches that have done a ministry in, in similar areas. Uh, families and, and connections in our community that are connected to foster care or um, maybe uh, adoption ministry, and, and just really working hard to set out um, a plan that's actually going to work and, and making sure that those support needs are there. I mean, even something as simple as getting our information technology enhanced um, so that we can be efficient in equipping people uh, on site as they need to in, in supporting this. Uh, second step is, again, related to you know, building our partnerships and uh, addressing facility needs. You know, there's a number of things that we need to address just from the aspect of Sunday morning for our congregation, and yet there's a lot of overlap with the potential for family outreach and building our playground, uh, the visitation space, you know, that, that uh, prayer room uh, over on the north side. And then uh, growing our, our nursery space to something that's adequate, um, both for Sunday mornings, but also for special events. Um, also for having family conferences on site, whether those are social workers through the county or uh, through a parachurch ministry like Together for Good, uh, and also tracking down grants. And there are grants that are available. Uh, one that comes to mind is available through the Minnesota Foster Care Network. Um, there, there would be potential for grants in the future for projects from uh, local community organizations uh, like the uh, uh, Mankato, Mankato Area Foundation. I think I've got that one right. Uh, and, and certainly some others too. And so you know, there's, there's potential there in terms of uh, seeking out resources. The third step is uh, to form uh, a relationship. And, and really, this is where things really start to take a very visible form. This is, you know, we, we, we have the facilities in place. You know, we've made those necessary steps because um, you know, if we can't show on paper what, what, how we're going to be leveraging um, our facility to be able to help meet these needs in terms of ministering to families and foster families, um, you know, there's, there's just no place for that conversation to go. And, uh, and so once the, the spaces begin to take space, or begin to take shape, then we can take those to those that are needing that support and say, hey, you know, as a church, we really care about the work that you're trying to do. Um, you know, we believe that we believe it's the word of God that's really necessary to bring true hope to families that need to change. But we know that you're trying to do your best with what you have, and we just want to partner with you. You know, what is it that we can do with you? And and that's where the conversation has been with Blue Earth County in terms of uh, potentially setting up the facility as an alternative conferencing site for families with those sensitive visits. Having a place in town that's you know far away from the roadway and uh, and set up well, and that's a wonderful way uh, to encourage those social workers. Let them know that there's a church that's willing to pray for them, encourage them, invite them uh, even into our church building to support the work that they do. And uh, there's a lot of payoff that that can certainly come from that. Uh, fourth, uh, this equipping of families and 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 especially our ministry leaders over the course of time. You know, this is something that's very challenging for churches to move into. And I think what's so intimidating is this notion that we need to have it all kind of figured out up front. I don't think that's true. I think what's most important is to have a humility and, and, and an understanding of all the things that we don't know. Um, this is not a situation, it's, it's, it's wrong-headed for a church to think that, well, we're going to go in and we're going to fix all the, the problem families in our community, or we're going to engage in uh, some high-stress uh, high complication uh, situations with families when we're really not equipped and trained to do that the way that maybe social workers are. Um, it, but there are resources that are available to get better at this. And the Christian Alliance for Orphans, they have at least their annual summit. They have additional trainings as well. Um, and I think as a congregation, if we can pursue 
um, you know, is sending those that are interested in this and, and just invest in them uh, and, and just cover for them to be able to go to a, a summit training on an annual basis to build a base of equipped leaders for this. Uh, that would go a long way. Uh, this is connected to to uh, Together for Good, Maradal Sandberg. She is a founding board member of the Christian Alliance for Orphans and uh, has uh, some mutual connections uh, with myself. And uh, that organization really has a heart to come into Mankato, but but uh, in order for them to do that, they're going to need partner congregations and volunteer families to engage in respite and wraparound care. And, uh, and, and that's something as a church we want to do. And the strategy here is, is instead of coming in and saying, hey, you know, we're going to have a, a, another uh, Christian ministry come in that's going to be in competition with, uh, with the county in terms of caring for these kids and, and supporting families, no, instead, the, 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 the answer to, to Blue Earth County and their concern about something like that is to say, no, this is an opportunity for the church to get upstream from, from you know, where the, the, a lot of the issues are that face the foster care system. You know, by the time that, that a child is, is put in the system, someone has picked up a phone and called the police, more than likely. You know, the families are facing the, the courts. It's a distinctly punitive situation. As a church, we can stay upstream from that and equip families to be able to give families a break if they're facing a crisis, uh, maybe meets, meet some immediate needs that come, especially um, as there are uh, economic difficulties that can come up. And by doing that, stay upstream of the foster care system and, and relieve the strain by preventing kids from ending up in that system in the first place. And unfortunately, there are situations where you, you do need to have removal and, and uh, certainly a, a place for social, uh, social services to get involved, child protective services and so on. But by staying upstream, we're able to relieve a lot of that pressure uh, on, on the foster care system and we're able to see positive results. We're able to see uh, uh, placement of children back in the parent's home in a shorter duration of time for a, a, a far, far less cost than what the investment takes for the county or for the state to be doing that same work. Um, we can't handle Every situation, it's unique situations that, um, that the county is going to need to have to handle. But uh, this is not something where we're coming in and saying, well, you know, you don't know what you're doing and, you know, you're failing at your job. And so we are going to supplant, um, you know, county foster care. No, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to have a conviction that <laughs> we can probably minister to families better with the hope of the gospel. Um, but our goal is to be proactive and engage families in a way that the county simply can't. So, and that leads us to step five, which at that point, you know, as we've uh, engaged partner congregations in the community and we be begin to grow volunteer families uh, between us and, and those other congregations, uh, Meridale Sandberg's organization Together for Good can deploy in Mankato and hire a network of professional social workers. And, uh, and that will offer a tremendous amount of support in terms of equipping uh, our wraparound teams who are also then supporting care families and, uh, and, and actually have a network that's available for respite care. And, and so those are the concrete action steps that lead us uh, to a place where we can deploy a very powerful network uh, to meet the family need of the greater Mankato area community. And when we think about the potential impact of that, I mean, this is just... This is just huge. I mean, that just, that's just a lot of work, right? But just think of, of that destination, that at some point, Living Word could truly be a champion for the widow and the orphan in this community. And we, we can really be the network for you know, churches, government entities, social workers, foster families, um, parachurch ministries. And we can be united in this cause to keep families together for good. Because as Christians, we believe that the family is the basic building block of society. We believe that that is how God has designed us. And, and we believe that God has called the church to uh, disciple and nurture the family uh, to, to, to be able to give kids the best shot they have in life. You know, these, family, these families where kids are, are stuck in a cycle of brokenness, um, it really does take the selfless love and care of the gospel to give those kids hope. And, uh, and so as, as we build this network, we're going to be able to deploy uh, a, just a host of respite care families and, and foster parents and support specialists. And suddenly the church has uh, a really tangible presence in the community, meeting a need that is not being met. And that's just absolutely incredibly enormous. Um, 
it gives us an opportunity to be a, a central location for a lot of uh, special training events related to foster care adoption and uh, to you know uh, other uh, other related uh, family events. Our facility there's a lot of there's a lot of limitations to our facility, but it it could potentially be set up in a way that is absolutely ideal for hosting these kinds of events. I had a social worker out. Um, at the property, and she's not the first to have said this, but you you come you come down Stoltzman Road, and you get out of your car, and there's just sort of this sigh of relief that it's just outside of the business of the city that you feel like you can breathe, and you walk in the facility. You know, there's no hallways, there's no losing eye contact with kids, and so you know dealing with some of these sensitive issues when there's a lot of uh, um, understandable trust issues and so on. It's just a beautiful place because, you know, people can feel safe and comfortable and away from their familiar surroundings in an easy-to-reach location. And that's why we're developing our land and our facility in, in the same way that we want to do this to draw families. You know, if we're able to do it to support this kind of ministry, um, we're going to make really smart choices uh, that are really going to be attractive to families that are looking for a church home. And... And uh, and so wherever wherever in the stage of uh, of this of, of this journey, it's going to have short term payoffs. Uh, even as we look to some of those long term payoffs with being able to build this as a a, a, a real home for Foster and the Faith Ministries. And uh, and lastly, you know this whole process it, it's designed to have this be something that's sustainable. It, it, it's it's designed with having in mind. The notion that there are unexpected detours that inevitably come. And yet, for however far down the road we get with this, it is something that encourages healthy stewardship of our resources in our facility as a congregation. It, it encourages a healthy missional mindset in terms, of meet, uh, in, in terms of meeting flesh and blood families in the circumstances that they're at, uh, and, and meeting an unmet need in the community that collectively uh, we can actually make an impact on and, and give us an outreach identity uh, as a congregation. And if we can't do that sustainably, if that's if that's just a pipe dream to burn us all out, um, that that doesn't do us any good. And so um, this plan is meant to have within it measures for sustainability. So that's an overview of where uh, where it is that that this ministry plan is taking us. Um, the action steps don't have all the details worked out, but I, I just encourage folks that there's just uh, an enormous potential here. And as we look at this ministry, uh, I just encourage you to reach out to trustees, to counsel, reach out to me as pastor uh, where you have questions. And uh, uh, just I, I'd encourage us to just be excited as we pray through these opportunities, as this takes shape for us at Living Word. I'm Pastor Chris Kumpala. God bless you.